So for the last couple of days, we've been talking about these logarithmic expressions. We've been simplifying them. We've talked about properties of logarithmic expressions. So the log stuff that we've done so far, definitely important to what we're going to be doing today, especially some of those properties that we talked about. But our focus for today's lesson is something called a common logarithm. So we've seen like log base 2 and log base 3, log base 1 fourth. We've seen all sorts of log bases. Um, and there's always the question of, hey, when would this ever be used in real life? And logs, common logs specifically, actually are used in real life. They're used with things like the measurement of sound, which is important to music. And they're used in... Um, like the Richter scale and things like that, and definitely lots of science applications. Um, but like log base 2 and log base 3 aren't used very often, but the common log is. That's actually why we call it the common log, is because it's used so frequently. So the common log is log base 10. All right, the base, common log of the room is the base 10 logarithm. All right, so it's the log base 10 of x. 10 is a really nice base, nice easy number. It's got really nice powers, you know, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, et cetera. Um, but like I mentioned, it's, it's so common that they actually don't even write the base. All right, so if ever you just see log of x, it's not missing something. There's not like a, a little portion of it missing or anything. It just literally, it's, it's so common that they only write log of x. Okay, and this, if you've seen any sort of scientific calculator, you know, those like little ones, the ones that are less fancy than the ones that we use, a lot of times they will only have two buttons. They will have just a log button, and then they have this button that's LN, and we'll talk about that in a couple days in the next lesson, I think. Um, so it's, it's on the scientific calculator. Our calculators can do much more fancy logs, but any calculator in the world, even like on your phone, for instance, um, actually, I'm going to show you. Wish I could pause the video while I walk across the room. So you guys have seen, especially if you've got an iPhone, you've got a calendar on it. I'm sorry, a calculator on it. And if you do like the little sideways turn, if you see that button right there next to the four, the only button that like really basic calculators have is just that log base 10 button. Okay, and then like I mentioned, the other one, the LN, we'll be talking about that in a lesson or two. Okay, so example one, we are going to use a calculator to evaluate each expression, which since we're talking about these calculators, we actually could use our iPhones, you know, you could use a little scientific calculator. I'll show you two different ways. So on our calculators, if you're in a calculator page, if you look next to the one, there's this 10 to the X button. And right above it in blue, it says log. So you hit control, and then you hit that button right there. Now, that little space, you can either write the 10 in, or if you don't write the 10, it'll assume you mean common log. So you can just ignore that and literally just plug in the 7. All right, so what this is asking us is 10 to what power gives us 7 as an answer. All right, so we know 10 to the first gives us 10. So if we want 10 to some power to give us 7, it's got to be something that's smaller than 1 like this, okay? Um, and let's go to, so the nearest 10,000th, so that is four decimal places. All right, so if you look at what we've got here, we've got 0.845, and then the nine rounds this up to a one. All right, so if we're rounding to the nearest 10,000th. Now let me show you on like your iPhone or another scientific calculator. So on your iPhone, if this is all you have available, you hit the seven first, and then you hit that log button, and it gives us the exact same answer. We can round it to four decimal places just like we did with the other one. Okay, so now same thing with this. Log of 0.5. Okay, so if we do this, and we type in just the 0 0.5, ignore the base, and it automatically thinks you mean base 10, the common log. This will give us negative. That should make sense. 0.5 is a fraction. So the only way to get a fraction is by raising to a negative exponent. Because remember, negative exponents do reciprocals. Like raising 2 to the negative first makes it a fraction. Raising 3 to the negative first makes it a fraction. Um, so 10 to the negative first gives us 1 tenth. So apparently 10 to the negative about 0 0.3010. We're going to round to four decimal places again.
Okay, so let me show you just to kind of check these answers. If we take 10 and raise it to this power right here, 0.8451. Now, since we're rounding, we're not going to get exactly 7, but we'll get something close. See, very, very close to 7. And if we take 10 and round it, or I'm sorry, raise it to this power, we're going to get something very, very close to 0.5. See? All right, so those are the powers that we were missing. All right, so remember, a logarithm is an exponent. I'm going to try to emphasize this point over and over and over again. So anytime you see this, log of x equals y. And remember, if you don't see a base, it means the base is 10. That's the common log. This is the same as saying that our base 10 raised to some power y is equal to x. So just converting back and forth between log form and exponential form. So for example, the log of 1 is equal to 0. The reason we know that the log of 1 is equal to 0 is because we know our base is 10. We're trying to figure out what missing power would give us an answer of 1, and that would be a power of 0. Okay, and if we have like log, just the log of 10, the log of 10, what that means is 10 to some power gives us 10, and that would be 10 to the first power. So that means that log of 10 is equal to 1. Because remember, it's the missing power. If you're looking for the log of something, you're looking for a power or an exponent. So we could do really anything, like log of 10 to the m. So we could do 100, 1,000, 10,000, anything like that. So this is saying 10 to what power? gives us this, 10 to the m, and that would, of course, be the m power, and so this is equal to m. All right, so the log of 100 would be 2. The log of 1,000 would be 3. The log of 10,000 would be 4, etc. Okay, so it's just a missing power anytime that you are looking for a log. All right, so let's look at the next page. I mentioned that there are a bunch of applications in real life, different sciences and things like that. There are two very common things, measurements of sound, which sound is measured in decibels, which I'm sure many of you singers or musicians know that, and then the magnitude of earthquakes. I'm sure you've heard of the Richter scale. All right, so here is an equation right here. The amount of energy E that an earthquake releases is related to its Richter scale magnitude. So here is this equation right here that we're going to be using. So the log of E, so remember if you don't see a base, it's the common log, and it's equal to this. So M is the Richter scale magnitude, and then E is what we're trying to solve for, okay? So let's use the equation to find the amount of energy, so that means we are trying to solve for E. Released by the 2004 Sumatron earthquake, measured nine on the Richter scale, which is huge. I don't know if you guys know anything about earthquakes, but it's very, very big, which is why it led to a tsunami. Just a little fun fact for you. So this means that M is 9.0, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in 9.0 for M and then solve for E, and I'll walk you through how to do that. So common log of E, again, if you don't see a base written, it means it's base 10, that's the common log, equals 11.8 plus 1.5 times, and instead of M, we're just substituting in this 9.0. You could, of course, just write 9. So this right-hand side, let's simplify this right-hand side up. So 11.8 and then plus 1.5 times 9. Okay, and it gives us 25.3. Okay, so what that means is that log of E is equal to 25.3. Okay, so we just saw these logarithmic equations. If we're trying to solve for something in a logarithmic equation, our main technique, if there's only a log on one side, okay, I'll say that again. So if there's only a log on one side, our technique is to turn it into exponential form. Okay, so we start with the base. Remember, this is a common log, so our base is technically a 10. This is our exponent equals the answer. Okay, so you guys should be comfortable by now with converting back and forth between log and exponential form. So if we figure out what this is, we figure out what E is. Okay? So let's just plug that in. So you could literally type out 10, like 1, 0, and then raise it to a power. Or there's a little shortcut button. See this button right next to the 1? Literally says 10 to the x. If you press that button... I mean, it's, it's a two-second shortcut, but it's a shortcut nonetheless. Type in the 25.3, and it gives you this. All right, so here's what we're going to write. We're going to write that E is approximately equal to, because there's way too many digits there to give the exact answer. So let's go to four decimal places, 1.9953, 
and then we write times. Anytime you see this little E, that's scientific notation. I don't know if you guys remember scientific notation at all, but this means times 10 to the 25. So what that means is we're taking this number right here, but we're moving the decimal over 25 times. So it's going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then there will be 21 zeros after that. So this is a huge, huge, huge number. Um, lots and lots of energy released by that earthquake. Okay, so that's your final answer. Just kind of practicing really what we were doing yesterday with solving those logarithmic functions. Okay, next, we're going to talk about exponential functions again. And this is something that we did a few sections ago. I think it was actually 7-2 was the first quiz that you guys had. And the, the equations that we saw there, like here's a 3, here's a 15. We're not used to seeing a 3 and a 15. We're used to seeing like a 9 or a 27 or an 81, something that can be written as a common base. Here, 15 is not a power of 3. It's a multiple of 3, which confuses people, but it's not a power of 3. The powers of 3 are 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the fourth. So what we do is we use a different technique. So we've got the technique from 7, 2, which unfortunately doesn't work here because you can't write this as a common base. That's what we mean right here. Um, so what we do is we solve by taking the logarithm of each side. And so this is where the common log comes in. All right, so first step, and you guys know how algebra moves work. Like you're allowed to add both sides or like add two to both sides. Or you're allowed to divide both sides by four or square both sides or square root both sides. Pretty much anything you do to one side, you do to the other. It's a totally fair move in algebra. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the common log of both sides of this equation. Okay, totally legitimate move as long as you're doing it to both sides of the equation. So that's our first step, is you are going to take the log of both sides. And since this is kind of a weird step-by-step -step process here, I'm just going to write us some little notes. Okay, so we start by taking the log of both sides. That's our first step. Once we've taken the log of both sides, here's something that we talked about the other day. Let's look at this. I'm going to put some 7, 5 stuff up on the screen. This is the power property of logarithms. This property says if you've got an exponent inside your log function, which we do, if you look right here, this looks exactly like this. See how we've got a log, and technically that's base 10, of course, because it's the common log. We have 3. 3 is like the B right here and x is like the m right here. This power property says that you can take this exponent and move it out front as a coefficient. So that is exactly what I'm going to do right here, and I'm going to leave this on the screen so we have a reference. So on this right-hand side, I'm going to take this x, I'm going to move it out front as a coefficient, just like we did right here in this property. Okay, so just so we have that property as a reference. So, make a little note again. The next thing I did was I applied the product property. Oops, I'm sorry. That was not the product property. Sorry, power property. Sorry, sorry. This is the power property that we learned about in section 7.5, in case you're looking back on that. Okay, and then the last thing we're doing is we want to get that x by itself. And so in order to get the x by itself, what we're going to do is divide both sides by this quantity right here. Okay, so divide both sides by log of 3. Okay, so here, log 3 over log 3 is just 1. On this side, I want to point out something that's going to seem very, very tempting. A lot of people will try to reduce the 15 and the 3. You cannot do that. This is not 15. This is the log of 15 which is a very weird number. This is the log of 3. They are two totally separate numbers, irrational numbers, but still totally separate numbers. You absolutely cannot reduce those numbers down. Okay? Here's what we do. We've got x equals. I'm going to plug this right into my calculator. It's going to look like this. I want to open up a fraction. So hit Control and then Divide. I'm going to type the log of 15 in my numerator. And then I'm going to type the log of... 3 in the denominator. So that is my answer. All right, so 2.45, would we say 10,000? So that's four digits again. So 2.46, and then this will round up to 5.0 from that 7. 
So 2.4650. And that is your answer. Okay? Let me just show you, if you decided you were going to reduce that down to log of 5, which is totally illegal, I just want to show you that you get something very different. Okay, not the same answer at all. So you absolutely cannot do that. What this number tells me, it says 3 to some power gives me 15. So if I took 3 and raised it to this power, I would get 15. So look at this number. 2 is between 2 and 3, obviously. 3 to the second power gives us 9. 3 to the third power gives us 27. So since 15 is somewhere between 9 and 27, the power should be somewhere between 2 and 3. And I'll show you. If we take 3 and raise it to this power, this power, 2.4650, you're going to get about 15. Not exactly, because we did round, but we get about 15. Okay, it's a really quick and easy way to check your answer. Okay, let's look at this. Pretty much the same thing. We're going to do these same few steps. Take the log of both sides. So we take the log of the left. Take the log of the right. And remember, what we're trying to figure out is 6 to what power gives us 42. And I'm going to tell you what we should be looking out for. 6 to the second power is 36. A little bit smaller than 42. 6 to the third power is 216. All right, so this power that we're expecting should be pretty close to 2 because 42 is pretty close to 6 squared. So it's definitely going to be a decimal, but it's going to be pretty close to 2. All right, second step, use this power property. Power property says if I have an exponent right here, I can move it out front as a coefficient, just like I did in this step. Okay, the third step is to get the x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by log 6, whatever that is. Log 6 over log 6 is 1, so that leaves me just with an x. Here, super tempting to try to reduce the 42 and the 6, but you cannot. You absolutely cannot. Okay, so now let's type that in. So open up a little fraction. Take the log of 42. Remember, I'm just skipping over that base. My calculator will assume it's 10. And then the log of 6. Okay, so just like I said, just a little bit bigger than 2 because 42 is just a little bit bigger than 36. So four decimal places, 2.086, and then the fourth decimal place is just a zero. Okay. okay, so that would be your answer, and you can always test it out. If we raise 6 to this power, 2.0860, you should get about 42. So you're just a little bit smaller than that. Okay, inequalities. So we are, we are getting there. Inequalities are pretty similar, same kind of idea. Um, we start still by taking the log of both sides. All right, so we're going to take the log of both sides here. So log of 3 to the 2x is greater than or equal to the log of 6 to the x plus 1. Okay, so that's what we're starting off with. And then we do the same thing. Remember that power property. Power property says I can take these exponents and bring them out front. Okay, so pretty much the same two steps that I've had before. Um, then what I'm going to do is a little bit weird. We basically distribute. So here, there's nothing to distribute. It's just 2x times the log of 3. Over here on the right-hand side, we have to distribute the log 6 to both of these pieces. So we have x times log of 6, and then plus 1 times log of 6, which is just log of 6. Okay, so again, all I did there was I distributed this x plus 1, log 6 times x, log 6 times 1, and I got these two different pieces right here. Okay, so we're trying to get the x by itself. So this part's a little tricky. This piece has an x. This piece does not. So we're going to gather all the like terms on one side. So I'm going to subtract this term from both sides. Okay, so this will cancel. Let's rewrite what I've got up here. So I have 2x times the log of 3 minus x times the log of 6 is greater than or equal to just the log of 6. Okay, so like I said, this algebra gets a little bit tricky. The last thing you're going to do is factor out an x. See how they both have an x here? We're going to factor out an x. It's like a GCF.
Okay, so I factored out an x, and finally, to get x by itself, I am going to divide both sides by this long quantity in parentheses. Okay, so this will cancel. I'll get x by itself, and I have x is greater than or equal to whatever this turns out to be. So we're going to very carefully plug this into our calculator. So open a fraction. I'm going to type in log of 6, and then divided by 2 times the log of 3 minus the log of 6. Whoops, skip that, put 6 here. Okay, so that gives me about 4.4190. Okay, and that would be your final answer there. Okay, let's do one more of these because these are a little bit tricky. So this one, we're going to follow the same steps. We start by taking the log of both sides. We've got a different variable here. It's a y. Don't let that freak you out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is use that power property where we can move this exponent out front. So y times log of 4. We're going to do the same thing on the right here. We've got a 2y plus 1 times log of 5. Okay, next thing we're going to do is going to be on the right-hand side. We're going to distribute that log 5 to both of these pieces. Okay, so we have 2y times log 5. And then plus just 1 times log 5. So anything times 1 just stays the same. Okay, next step is we're going to take this piece right here and subtract it because we want to gather all the variables on one side. We're trying to get the y by itself. Okay, so these cancel. Let's move up here. So I have y times the log of 4 minus 2y times the log of 5, and it's less than just the log of 5. Okay, a couple more steps here. Same step as I did up above. I'm going to factor out the y. Okay, and then finally, to get the y by itself, I'm going to divide by this term. Okay, so these will cancel. I get the y by itself is less than, and I'm going to plug this thing into my calculator. Okay, so open a fraction. I've got the common log of 5. Remember, we're just skipping over that power, that base log of 4 minus 2 times the log of 5. Okay, so we've got that all typed in, and we get negative 0 0.14 decimals, 8782. Okay, we've got one teeny little thing on the next page. I apologize for these being a little longer than normal, but this is very, very quick. Just a change of base formula, because I mentioned that scientific calculators, you can't put in any base you want. So that's why we have this thing called the change of base formula, and it goes like this. If you have log base A of N, so A could be anything, 2, 3, 1 fourth, whatever, we say that it's equal to the common log of N over the common log of A. All right, so since all we normally have is a common log, you do the common log of this piece over the common log of this piece, and that's it, okay? So let's do the same thing right here. So this, log base 6 of 8, 6 is like your A right here, and 8 is like your N. So log base 6 of 8 is like the common log of 8 divided by the common log of 6. Okay, now let me show you that in your calculator. So if we do a little fraction... We've got the common log of 8 over the common log of 6. So this is a formula that you are required to know, even though your calculator can do it for you. So let me prove it to you. One point, we've got 1606. That's your answer. Let me prove to you that it is equal to this, because your calculator can do this. It's just that most calculators can't. 
So if we do this, we could type in 6 as the base and 8 as your answer, and you get the exact same number. So like I said, it's because scientific calculators can't plug in a different base. Many other calculators you can't. These are so advanced that they let us do this. But, you know, things like the ACT, or if you're using a different calculator, you need to know this change of base formula is important. Okay, so I apologize for the length of this video. There was a lot of good stuff to get in here. Um, and we've just got one more section in this chapter. So we are getting there.